three. It's the magic number. Yes, it is. It's the magic number. Or is it? Welcome, everybody. Two chaps, many cultures. Today, we'll talk about the cultural relevance of numbers. Is there one? Does it really matter? Stay tuned. And you'll find out. Wednesday, happy hump day, happy post election day. No, we're not talking about any of that. It is Two Chaps Mini Cultures live from the Two Chaps Studio Complex, wherever in the world that may be. And it is episode, what episode is it, Brett? It is episode 88. And that is relevant how? No, it's not. I just I think it's a nice number. No, it's relevant. It's relevant. A couple of numbers are relevant. And we have some relevancy, especially because I learned, you know, when I first went to China, I was, I, was, I thought it was just coincidence that the company I was working with was on the eighth floor at Suite 808, and the address was 800 on the road. On, on the road that, oh, this was fascinating. I thought, oh, well, that's, that's all very good. And then I realized that the wonderful lady who was in charge of that office said to me, no, this is really so we can get some really good employees. How about that? And I went, what's that got to do with it? And so basically I asked a question. So today, not particularly, you know, specifically for the, the number eight in China, but other cultures as well, what importance numbers play. We have a very special guest who will bring in and suggest uh, or tell us why some of those things exist. Anisha, ni hao. Ni hao. And we gotta make her her mic hot all right now. Oh, how are you? How are you? You're still on mute. Oh, that's the life in COVID COVID 2020. <laughs> yes, now we go. Hello, I'm uh, Anisha. How are you? Hello. Thank you for joining us. This is exciting, and I'm curious. What's it with the number eight? in Chinese culture. Is this relevant? Does this matter? What was Brett's experience? Yeah. Thank you for having me. Number eight, that's our lucky number as a Chinese. That means the same pronunciation in some of our language. It's called the fa. That means wealth and fortune. Best wishes will become wealthy. And in the Taoism culture, eight, similar as infinity, means completeness and wholeness. So eight is everything. If you go see, if you bid for a driver's license or a, a plate license, you pay extra money to get an ending with eight. If you want to have a telephone number with eight as the end, you pay extra. Yes. I it's love eight. <laughs> I have eight in my in my cell phone. It's not at the end, but I have an eight. Is that still good? Yeah, it's okay. Preferably <laughs> to be at the end. Okay, oh. I will have to pay extra, I guess. <laughs> yes. So the sound for the number eight in the Mandarin language is similar to another word, which is. Fa eight in man in Cantonese, Cantonese Can language, yes, is similar as fa, fa as be wealthy, prosperous. We want everything to be eight. I gave you an envelope, you know, the red envelope of yes. Chinese culture. I want to put eight dollars there. If, if I say, see you off, you go on traveling, I'd like to give you $168. It's called along the way being rich. So, nice. yes, eight is the best. I like to have eight. 
So I also think, I know, I'm not quite sure I heard about this, that half of the number eight is a number that is associated, if you pronounce it, uh, with the word for death. Is that correct for Cantonese or is it only correct for Mandarin? No, uh, the pronunciation is that, yes, you are right. Half of the eight is four. Four is no good in Chinese culture. It, mean, it's mean, it means death. I don't want to have a condominium located on the floor, fourth floor. So right. the developers will skip the fourth floor. So you you in the elevator, third floor, fifth floor. There's no fourth floor. We don't want that. <laughs> and that is similar to Western societies where the number 13 is considered to be unlucky. So there's many um, buildings where there is no 13th floor. There's a 12th and a 14th floor. So numbers apparently do influence us more than we we would like to admit, I guess. Exactly. Give you an example. In China, nine is very important. Mean it means eternity, everlasting, and longevity, and associate with the empress. So the forbidden city of China. Guess the palace. How many rooms it has? Take a guess. Hey. <laughs> Going with nine, right? 9,999 looms. Ooh. Eternity for the emperor family. Nice. Great. Yes. Can, you guys, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. You come in a little bit with a delay, Brett, but we, we're we okay with that, right? It's uh, Well, I'm, I'm often talked about being behind. That's fine. I, I can catch up later. But yeah, no, it, this is fascinating. So my experience in China, which I learned, obviously, because I'm a, you know, I, I like to ask questions, I found out. And uh, of course, in terms of everything I did after that, even in my current life, I find myself, wow, this is a pretty good, fun thing to do. Everything that I do now has some aspect of eight in it. I love it when eights pop up in my life. So you've You've had this, uh, the, uh, my, my experience, at, at least doing business there, has been one of, you know, it's, I just tend to do it, whether it's true or whether it's uh, just superstition or not. But obviously in, um, in a, not, a lot of other cultures, you know, maybe, maybe eight's not a lucky number. Maybe eight is not so um, fortunate or maybe it has other con connotations. So, you know, this is what we talk about. This is about, this episode is about, thinking about numbers and its place in a culture, the way that people kind of think about numbers and how they show up, whether they do show up, whether it's important they show up, whether it's not important they show up. Um, no, what about what about you, Christian? I, mean, I think you mentioned something before about the number yeah. eight in German culture. Yeah, no, this is, I wouldn't say in German culture, it's more in, in Germany as a society, as as of today, it, the yep. number eight and the number one are not necessarily special in, in German culture. However, um, due to Germany's history in the 20th century, the numbers one and eight, um, if they're used um, in a certain combination, they will be frowned upon. So when Anna said um, mm -hmm. you want to have the number eight as the last digit on your license plate, um, most German communities, most German um, departments of motor vehicles will not issue a license plate with the number 18 or number 88 on it. Because in, in the Latin alphabet, in the, yeah, in, in, in the alphabet that we use in most uh, European-based languages, in the Latin alphabet, um, one is the position one is the letter A, and the position eight is uh, the letter H. So AH are the initials of Adolf Hitler. So in, in neo-Nazi culture, um, in the, those uh, people who, for whatever deranged reasons, are holding on to the ideology of, uh, of the Nazis, uh, the, these numbers 18 and the number 88, the number of today's episode, um, you can only, I, I'm not going to say it out loud because it will hurt my brain if I do it, but 
there are two words that both start with the letter H in, in, in Nazi ideology. So these numeric codes, 18 and 88, they, they carry a meaning um, for, for these people with a certain political inclination. So most, most DMVs in, in Germany, if not all, will decline giving you a license plate that ends that has 18 or 88 as, as the, the alphanumeric code on it. So numbers and their meaning could change quickly depending on what a group of people decides to be a positive meaning or uh, a negative, unfortunate meaning. Right? It's fascinating. In, in, in my country, you, you want to get a license plate or license with 88, you have to probably pay extra to get it. Yeah. So, yeah. so for Chinese people in Germany or vice versa, this may create a contract conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may create a conundrum and yet there will be the, the person at, at the office where you come to request your 88, they, they will explain it to you in, in, in no uncertain terms why, why that won't mm. be possible. Um, it, 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 may not, it may not satisfy your desire to have that number on your license plate. Um, there's other ways you can um, embrace the number eight. As, as in, in most, I, I don't know, this is, a, this is a question I can't answer, but the, the, the mathematical symbol for infinity looks like a, a number eight, and a number, the Arabic number eight uh, flipped by 90 degrees. So um, that, that symbol seems to, uni seems to be universal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we said it, it represents wholeness in Taoism. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no. fascinating on the number. Uh, for, for Chinese, we also have other numbers. For example, six is very good. It means flow, flow well. Um, so yeah, you flow. So everything going smoothly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay. There is also the the dozen, the number twelve in in many Western cultures. The dozen is seem to be, even though it it's not in the decimal system a logical step, but twelve seems to be something. Um, I don't know, catchy. The baker's mm -hmm. dozen, like 12 loaves of bread. The, I, I guess it comes from Christianity, maybe? The, the 12 apostles, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Brett, do you have an idea why the dozen is, is favored in many Western cultures? Yeah, I don't know. That, that's a good where It might be. But then, of course, what we always, I mean, I always heard about the baker's dozen, you know, and the baker's mm. dozen is one plus 12 meaning the baker gives you an extra bread roll in your packet, right? And that's a 13. And then some cultures say that 13 is an unlucky number. <laughs> yes, we don't want to say 13, so it's the baker's dozen, right? So we don't have to say 13. You don't have to say 13, just like you probably wouldn't have a fourth floor on a hotel or something like that. So, yeah. Anna, you can maybe answer this because I've been mm -hmm. struggling. I've, I've, I've known for years that the number four is not good in, in Chinese culture. No. And there is a famous German car manufacturer of which mm -hmm. I happen to be a fan. I like their products. I, I like driving BMWs. And mm -hmm. one of their models is the four series. So I think they are marketing that vehicle as the four series in China as well, aren't they? Yes, they they do. It's isn't that more totally, Isn't that so, stupid? I, I wouldn't say stupid. BMW has good reputation. In fact, German products is presumed to have a good quality products. So right. have the good reputation. And I think because there is a three series, so it's okay, there's a four series. And people buying BMW, lots of them are young people. So there's a little bit young people, how they take things versus elder people. But definitely four is not so good a number, not only to Chinese, but also to Vietnamese, Japanese, Koreans, all of uh, the similar culture-wise, for is not a good, good sign. 
you can say it's superstitious, but it's so much into our lives. Right. So I think it's more than superstitious. I think it is because if you hear it all your life, I mean, I, I am aware that the number 13 is a fairly arbitrary number to be unlucky. Yet when I see the number 13 or when it is Friday the 13th, there's movies about that date, Friday as um, in Christianity, again, the, the Friday, the day right. when they nailed Jesus to the cross, right? So that, mm -hmm. that's, Friday is not the best day. I believe, if I know my Bible correctly, Brett, Brett is the better Catholic. He might correct me on that. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then 13 is, is the unlucky number, right? So it is so deeply ingrained in our upbringing that it's, as you said, Anna, it's more than just superstition. It becomes reality so to say right exactly and also people are flexible just as you use the example of four series of bmw in china the number of 1314 is a good number but it has to be all four numbers together it means whole life in that incidence actually people wish 1314 for a newly wedded couple to stay together forever so th therefore, it's not that bad. So we use it in different scenarios too. Nice. But to be on the safe, if one doesn't know the culture, I would advise avoiding using the four in most circumstances. Are there any other numbers that you would advise us to use or not use in, in Chinese or any other Asian cultures? You know, it's interesting that we, we, I also looked at Korean culture. For Northern Korean, actually, both Koreans think eight, eight is a good number. But for Northern Korean, they think nine is a good number because the current country's founding father, um, General Jin Yi Chan, um, one time, eight shamanists from eight provinces told him the family of king will be uh, associated the bloodline with the number of nine therefore for them nine is is really lucky number it's just yeah. an example and for koreans they also like number three because that means steady you know you have three points then you have a surface rather than a line so it's much more stable ah and this is what we started, or what I tried to start with in the beginning of this episode. I was trying to sing because I know I'm really bad at it. But three is the magic number. Um, that's a quote from those of you who are old enough might remember this if you went to school in the United States at a certain time. It is a song from Bobby Darren from the series of Schoolhouse Rock. And he has a mm -hmm. song for every number. And the song three is the magic number became popular even after the 1960s and 70s because it was used as a sample in a hip-hop track in the in the early 90s by a band called De La Soul. So that's how I learned of it because I didn't go to school in the 1970s, but three is the magic number in many Western cultures as well. Right, right. For example, Japan, nine means agony. It's similar pronunciation. So people avoiding and four, they don't like that neither but they prefer seven and eight. So it shows different country with different languages. The languages inference to people's culture and preference is integral part of that. Right. Well, we would like to see the comments people as you're watching this either live right now or in the replay. And when you watch the replay, it will still be right now because you're watching it. Uh, we'd like to see your comments pop up underneath this video screen. What are some of the positive number associations that you have in, in your culture? What are some of the negative number numerical associations? I'm, I'm curious. We're all curious to learn from your culture. We highlighted a few um, Eurocentric and, and, and Asian-centric numerical associations, but maybe there are some in, in South America, in Africa, in the Middle East, whatever, wherever in the world you are or have cultural connections to, we're curious to learn from you. What are some of the numbers that are good or maybe not so good? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm also, I, want, I hope you can display this for us because 
I'm such an ignorant when it comes to Chinese culture. I will, uh, I own this. I will admit it because that's not one of the cultures I've had much interactions with. However, I learned something of Chinese numbers that is, uh, I, I would say, a big, a big step in in development and advancement that we in the Western world never develop. In Chinese culture, you can count to ten using only one hand. We Westerners somehow never learn this. We always need both hands to count to ten. So how do you count to ten with one hand in China? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, ten is two because it's double digits. Oh, so you need this. But what is this yeah, when 10. you make this? Zero. Zero. Okay. So the advantage being, I think, one big advantage of this system is that if you're dealing, if you're doing business in the market, you hold your money safely in one hand and you signal the price with the other hand to your potential customer. You don't have to drop your money in order to make the next transaction. Genius, China. Genius. Well, we do we do negotiate price a lot. Any. <laughs> occasion as we are allowed nice yeah. in a wonderful wonderfully storied culture like china with five thousand ideas of history they've had plenty of practice at it so absolutely <laughs> takes well, time to learn takes yeah. time even for me yeah so right thank you everybody brett are you still with us can we we see yeah. you but we're not really sure if you froze up or if you just Okay, well, I'm still here. I'm still here. Can you hear me? We can hear yes. you. Well, Your video doesn't co cooperate I'm with good. you. Yeah, it's not cooperating. So thank you very much, Anna. Good to see you again. Thank you for coming on. And uh, this is Two Chaps, Many Cultures. And and uh, how do you say 88 in China? The proper way of saying 88 in Mandarin. 88. Yeah. 88 means eight. That's ba. Mandarin. Wonderful. <laughs> thank, oh, thank you everybody you. see you next Ach time in German just if you cared if anyone cared 88 is yeah. I do not all right <laughs> and in Polish osiem dziesięć osiem that's what I thought great okay see you guys bye. Great. thank you for having me bye